Ten years ago, I was returning home from a road trip with two friends. I received a phone call from my parents asking when we would be arriving, and I explained that we were about 25 minutes away. About a minute later, we came around a bend. It was a full moon and we could see the reflection from a lake below us. And other than that, the road was completely empty. Suddenly, everything went completely dark in the car. No lights from the dash, gauges, headlights on the road. The music also stopped and restarted at the beginning of the CD we were listening to. There was now a vehicle pulled over by the police about one-fourth mile in front of us that hadn't been there a split second before. I assumed I had dozed off just for a second as it was late. I thought it was still quite peculiar. After about a minute, the driver of the car turned the music all the way down and said, Did that just happen to anyone else? The other passenger in the back seat sat forward abruptly and exclaimed, I thought I just fell asleep. We then realized that the clock in the car was reading an hour later than it just had been a minute before. To keep ourselves from freaking out, we decided that the car had possibly a momentarily electrical failure and reset the clock to an odd time. Turned off the dash lights, headlights, and gauges and restarted the CD player. But when we arrived home 25 minutes later, we were one hour late. I am missing an hour of my life, and to this day I have no idea how it happened. Okay guys, Red Moon here. So this is a 13 story video. I hope you enjoyed the first story so far, there's still 12 more to come. So buckle your seatbelt and be prepared for a spook. When I was a teenager, I had two really intense dreams one night. The first one was about an online friend of mine calling me to say she'd broken up with her boyfriend. And I sang a few lines of Sills, Don't Cry to her over the phone. The second dream was finding a real life friend's dead body floating in her bathtub. I didn't think anything of it until I logged online that evening, and the online friend came online to tell me her boyfriend broke up with her. I immediately asked if I could call her and she said no. I remember thinking that it meant something like I could change it. Not long after, my phone rang and it was the real life friend from the dream calling me. I was completely freaked out at this point but talked to her normally. She was just talking about school and shit. Up until I realized I heard a splash in the background and I asked her, Are you in the tub? And when she said yes, I felt my heart stop and I asked her, What did you do? She didn't answer me right away. And then after a very long pause, she told me she'd take an entire bottle of pills and chased it with mushrooms and vodka. She'd gotten scared waiting for it to hit her, so she called me so she'd hear someone's voice. I hung up and called 911. By the time they got there, she was unconscious, but alive. Today, she's a mom to a beautiful little girl, and she's okay. Not creepy, but so vivid and distinct that I still think about it years later. I had a subjectively long involved dream where I was a vendor in a fish market. I remember getting up early, dressing, doing a whole morning routine, going to get tea, heading out to the docks, buying fish, loading them into the cart, and going to get ice hanging them for ice and buying some less fresh fish while I was at it, then going to a market to my stall, setting up and selling fish all day. It was so real. I talked to friends, smoked nasty cigarettes, haggled customers, ate lunch, had tea, and just lived through the day. At the end of the day, I cleaned up, counted my cash, paid the stall rent, and went home. I cooked up some fish that I have not sold for the day, Sling with some veggies and rice that I traded for, I drank more tea and relaxed for a while, then drew a hot bath, soaked and smoked some more cigarettes, then I went to bed. The next morning I woke up refreshed, ready to go down to the docks to buy fresh catch, except I was in my house next to my wife, trucked parked outside and it was Saturday, no work. My wife and I were getting geared up to go skiing in Oregon and the car was already packed. Weird thing was... In the dream, I was single, and a smoker which I'm not, and the whole long dream had been in fluent Chinese, the effortless kind of fluency that only comes from a lifetime of speaking it. Oh, and I had been Chinese. I'm a big hairy white dude, somewhat fluent in Spanish, and I know a little bit of Russian, but I've never, it was just weird, I've never worked in a fish market. 
I wonder who I was, I wonder what I was. This happened back in college. I was driving home from my cabin in northern Wisconsin through the Indian Reservation. There was a man on the side of the road sort of limping along. I pulled over and asked if he was okay. He said yes, he was fine. He just needed to get home because his wife decided she still loved him. They had a fight. I asked the man where home was and surprisingly, it was the same city where I went to college about two hours away. I offered him a ride. He did not talk much. He was tired. When we got into town, he started giving me directions. Just down here, it's close, he said. Take a left at the lights. Okay. Right here, he said, pointing. After the white truck. Here? I pulled into the driveway. Yes. Shut up, I said. What? He was grinning like he knew what I was going to say next. I used to live here, I told him. You don't say. Yes, upstairs, apartment number three. Yes, that's ours. Now he was smiling ear to ear. Small world, he said. He thanked me for the ride and got out of the car and walked through the front door of my old apartment building. I know it was just a coincidence, but it was one of the strangest moments of my life. I was heading home with my dad. We stopped at a drive through I started feeling more and more anxious for no reason, to the point where it makes me lightheaded and sick to my stomach. We have to wait a little bit ahead, because they gave us the order wrong, so I sit there, feeling like shit, and it suddenly comes to me an urge to call my brother. He was trying to call us. He was in a car accident. No one died. Some got seriously bruised. He was only shaken. I told him to shut up and get as far away from the car as possible. He did not understand but followed through, trying to call some of his buddies to join. And I could hear them calling him a wuss, him giving up and getting far and then a loud noise, people shouting. After the whole shit was over, he told me what happened. His drunk friend tried to impress some girls in the car, hit the gas, drifted, and hit the bottom of the car on some rocks, completely ducking the engine. They stood near the car, the driver still inside trying to turn the engine back on. The hood burst into flames and the car starts to burn fast. The driver managed to get away but got severely hurt. Some of the guys and girls who stood around were hurt and burnt too, but not as bad as the driver. My brother was the only one with light bruises from the whole thing. He told me that when I ordered him to get away from the car, he was in front of it, inches from the hood. I never experienced anything like this before and after. Just this once. It's just a ducking weird memory. I don't remember what I was thinking. I remember it like watching a movie and seeing myself in everything from an outside angle. I was catching a sky train in one particular city about 15 minutes from where I get off. While I wait there is a woman with glazed eyes asking people for money. She came up to me, stopped briefly and asked, Excuse me. Could you spare me some money? My brother is in the hospital and I'd like some money to buy him some flowers. That's rich, I thought. Drug addicts are getting more and more obvious with their lies. Here's five dollars. I gave it to her without even looking her in the face, convinced of her intentions. Anyways, my train pulls up and I get on. I look through the glass at her, walking around, asking others for money as the train pulls away. The train arrives at the station 15 minutes later and I walk down and out to the bus stop. There's only one bus stop in the direction I'm going. And just my luck. It's there waiting when I get off the train. So on the bus I hop and I wait for the bus driver to finish reading his paper before he closes the door and we embark down the highway. About 5 to 10 minutes after traveling, the driver pulls over for a routine stop. The door opens and to my complete astonishment, the woman from the sky train walks into the bus, a dozen roses in hand. She looks me right in the eyes as she walks past to her seat. How in the blue hell did she get there? I took the train before her. I watched her at the train stop from inside as we pulled away. I went over a river. I caught the first and only bus going this particular direction. And not only did she beat me there, she had time to go to the store and buy a dozen roses. To this day, I have no idea how this happened. It happened in early 2000 when I was working at a juvenile detention center in a small town in Oklahoma as a corrections officer. I was working nights at the time and went to work at a 9 p.m. 
This one night, when I arrived for work, my supervisor looked confused and asked me what I was doing there. I said, I work tonight. And he said, but they said you called in a few hours ago saying you were sick. I was a bit confused and said, it must have been someone else and they got the message wrong. After everyone else showed up for work that night, it was a bit more weird. But we carried on as usual and assigned everyone their places for the night. I went to work in the control room where I usually work. The control room is the center of the prison that has direct control over the cameras, doors, phones, and everything. After I relieved the guard duty and settled in for the night, I looked at the message that said I called in. It said that I had called at 6.50 and said that I had gotten sick while out cleaning up after the storm. There had been a storm the night before and it was a bit bad, but not anything that I had to go out and clean up. It was truly weird. The supervisor came into the control room about that time. He was also a friend of mine outside of work and we started talking about it and how odd it was. I decided to call my wife at home and tell her about it while he was still sitting there. I pick up the phone and dialed. After two rings, a man picked up the phone with a raspy voice and said, Hello? I didn't know what to say for a few seconds. I looked at the phone to make sure I dialed the right number and I had. After a few seconds, the person says, Hello? In the same raspy voice. I said, Hello, who is this? This is Taylor, who is this? The person said. My head started spinning because my name is Taylor also. I said in almost a scream, Where is Anne? He said, Anne's in bed, who is this? I dropped the phone and told my supervisor to ring me out, I had to get home. I took off towards the door. I could hear Dave pick up the phone behind him and say, Hello? Followed soon after by, What the heck? Rather loudly. I ran to my car and drove home faster than what was legal, my mind racing the entire time. I busted through the door and my wife was sitting watching television, was absolutely shocked at me being home. I asked her who was there and she said no one has been here. After a rather long talk with my wife, I went to call the prison and tell them what was going on, but the phone was dead. I went back to work and when I came in, Dave was acting weird and asked me, how the hell are you doing this? He told me that when I left, he picked up the phone and the person on the end sounded like me. He kind of freaked out and hung up the phone. A minute later, as he could see my car leaving the parking lot, I had called back from home and asked what the duck was going on. He said that I was a bit irate and said I was sick and did not feel like playing these games, and I was telling him to stop pranking calling me and hung up. After convincing him I have no idea what was going on, we went back to work. Later, I find out the phone line from my area had been knocked down the night before the storm. This is absolutely the strangest thing that's ever happened to me. This happened when I was 11. I still remember it like it was yesterday. My grandfather was getting old and had been in and out of the hospital a few times that year. At the moment, he had been in the hospital for probably two days. We had gone into the hospital to visit him where I gave him a big hug and told him I loved him and we would see him tomorrow. That night I went to bed and had the most beautiful dream. My grandpa came into my room and sat in the rocking chair in the corner. He invited me into his lap and told me he was going away for a while and that someday he would see me again. I shouldn't worry because everything was okay and he wasn't in any pain. I smiled at him and gave him a big hug and told him I understood. I then looked up over my brother sleeping in the bunk below me and asked my grandpa if we should wake him up and tell him. When I turned back around to get a response from my grandpa, he was gone. I ran to the window to look out to the front yard. There he was, waving at me. He whispered, Go tell your mom and dad exactly what I told you. I looked back at the door to my room and then the back of the front yard and he was gone. I immediately woke up, ran to my parents' room and turned on the light. I told them exactly what grandpa had told me. They told me it was a dream and go back to bed. I told them again exactly what grandpa told me. Again, frustrated it was 2 a.m., told me to go to bed and we would talk about it in the morning. Just then, the phone rang. It was the hospital. My mother stood sobbing. Grandpa had passed. At the moment, she just sat there with my father staring at me. I still remember their faces. 
They both looked at each other, then me, then each other, and finally smiled and stopped crying. They gave me a big hug and told me they loved me and go to bed. They ended up getting to the hospital that night, and my aunt came over to watch us. But we have never talked about that night since. In fact, I don't think I have ever written about it, which explains the tears rolling down my cheeks right now. Wow, that was liberating, and I'm glad other people have had these types of things happen. When I was like 10 or 11, I was going to the beach with my aunt and her friends. There were two cars of us. To get there, we had to go through a very large industrial area. We did not know the direction, so our car was following the other. Suddenly, they did an unexpected turn, so our driver had to take a sharp bend. In that moment, we heard a very clear, loud voice inside the car saying, laughingly, Sharp bend him! The driver immediately hit the brakes. We looked at each other puzzled. We all recognized it as a voice not belonging to any of us. And the very same time, we noticed the other car had stopped as well. The other driver got out of the car with a scared face and shouted to us, D Did you hear that as well? They heard the very same thing inside their car. The area around was fully deserted. As I type this, I am already feeling deja vu. I've always wanted to share this part of my life with someone, but have never been able to. So, I'll just tell a bunch of people on the internet. One day, I was walking to work and all of a sudden had an urge to walk in a different path than usual. I work downtown in a big city. It was a strange spur at the moment urge to walk in a different way that changed my life forever. I turned into an alley I have never seen before as I remembered it. I made it about 15 feet or so when the actual glitch happened. Everything in my mind scrambled. I felt like I didn't have a body anymore. I just sat there, I was semi-conscious entity floating through some weird dimension. All of a sudden, in the array of different colors and shapes, a vision came to me. It was a bunch of strange looking people that in my mind resembled businessmen in suits. They looked startled and panicked that I could see them. One of the quote people made a quick movement and everything turned to black. When I regained normality, I was on a completely different street. It was the same street that I always used to walk to work. I felt sick and severely disturbed and depressed. I've never done any hard drugs, never experienced any hallucinations, never had anything like this happen to me. The weird thing is, when the glitch was correcting itself, I could still see those people watching me like a caged animal. I had the feeling that I knew I was being controlled. It still bothers me very much to this day. A long time ago, I had a conversation with an old workmate who said one day he and his house when he felt a sudden need to go outside and stand on his lawn. He claimed it was the strongest, clearest feeling ever. And on doing so, he experienced a sort of wobble. He just said everything was screwed up for a moment and he experienced a feeling of detachment outsideness. When it passed, he turned to go back inside. Now, while talking to me, he got quite upset at this point and asked me not to think he's crazy, but he said the next thing he saw was his car parked in the street and it was the same model, registration, but a different color. He was so thrown off at this, and then more so because his wife came out and asked what he was doing, and he said he realized, quote, she was all in appearance his wife, but somehow not his wife. He said from the point on, she liked food she had claimed to hate before, and sometimes brought up memories. He said had zero relation to things they have done in the past. He said things like his route to work was still the same but somehow different. He said there were buildings on the way that either had missed in the six years he'd driven past, five days a week, or just appeared overnight. He even said some people he remembered from other departments and work had just vanished. And asking about them brought total incomprehension from other people. He was totally regularly healthy guy, but he said he measured his life in relation to that afternoon. There were things that happened before the change and everything afterwards. He went to say he was now living his life with a feeling that about 15% of it had spontaneously changed that evening. We moved on drifted apart since different jobs, but I've never really felt so sure about the permanence of reality ever since. Back when I was in fifth grade, I remember sitting in class about to take an exam. 
It was one of those where the teacher would write down the questions and we would all write the answers on our sheet. After about the third question, I started to realize that I had already seen these questions in the same order and knew the answers. I honestly remember it being like Groundhog's Day, where I had this deja vu moment like I'd already sat in through the test the previous day. I raised my hand and said we already had done these questions, and I got this dumbfounded look from my teacher and classmates. I looked around like, seriously, I'm the only one realizing this? Oh really, our teacher says. What are the next answers? I went up and wrote the next several answers that just came to my head. He looked down at his test, verified the board, then canceled the test. Spent the rest of the afternoon with the teacher and principal being accused of compromising the test. The principal had him go through all his notes and lessons plans to see if he had briefed the test by accident in the past. They asked the other kids and nobody else remembered. They all scored shitty on that test. About a year ago, I had a terrible nightmare. It started off me waking up in bed during a thunderstorm. As the room eliminated again and again from the flashes of lightning outside, I realized the bed I was laying in wasn't mine. The head of the bed against the wall and the door was located on, and from my perspective, I couldn't tell if it was open or closed. That is until I saw the face. At first, just the nose and jaw broke past the door frame, but then the entire face slowly passed through the doorway. I tried to yell, Who the duck are you? Where the duck am I? But it felt like I've lost my voice. No matter how hard I tried to scream, nothing came out. And this person continued to enter the room, looking dead ahead, away from me. Then, just as the person was completely into the room, their head snapped towards me. It was locked on eyes with me. I tried to get out of the bed but felt completely paralyzed. The person started making their way towards me, but with every step their body contorts in ways that would break a normal person's bones. Their neck snapped so back to their head it touched their back. Their jaw lay or flat on their chest. Their arms had broken at the shoulders and migrated to the back like wings. Just terrifying. And just before they reached me, I woke up. The next day, I told my mom about it, went into the great deal about the room. Turns out, it was almost an exact copy of my room when I was a baby. We moved out of that house when I was super young. Like, I have no idea what's inside to any of the rooms look like. Just kind of weird, I guess. Okay, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's spook. That story's gonna bring today's video to an end. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy this as Red Moon will be uploading plenty of content to binge watch. So if you're into spooky stories, horror stories, unexplained drama, go ahead and press subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. I hope to see everyone tomorrow. Bye for now.